Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to the video for what is the actor component interp to movement. Let's run through this quick little example here. We're going to see a little cube move back and forth and then stop. And that's it. That is what our interp to movement node is doing. It is an actor component, not a node, sorry about that, that I've gone ahead and applied to a blueprint. We're actually going to delete this and we're going to start over from scratch so I can show you how it works and some possible issues. So if we go ahead and let's add a cube, this is going to be our movement item. And then let's go ahead and add the interp to movement. Now if we were to go ahead and run this, we're going to see nothing happening because, well, we haven't set up anything to happen. The interp to movement is meant to basically interpolate back and forth smoothly, well, interpolate smoothly from point A to point B and then to point C to D and as many points as you have. That is determined by our control section. We have the control, behavior, and simulation sections. These are going to be for our interp to movement. We have the event section. This is unique because these are callbacks when you do certain things. And then the planar movement, movement component, tags, activation, variable, and sockets are all not unique, so we will not be covering them here. So here's one thing that's important to keep in mind. Our movement component, this is what determines what is moved inside of the blueprint when we do the interp to movement. By default, it's going to register itself to the parent object, which is going to be our scene root. Now that's important to keep in mind, because our scene root does not have any form of collision. And you'll see that as an issue shortly. So, how do we set this up? Well, it's pretty simple. By default, it's set to one second to go from beginning to end, and there is nowhere to go. So we need to add in at least two control points. Position control point 1 is basically where it's going to start and if it's relative or not to the root of the component. So we're going to set this to 0, 0, 0, position is relative. That means it's going to start off at the beginning. Our next one, let's go ahead and put it 300 on our Y. And what this is going to do is it's going to go from here to here over one second. And let's make this three seconds. And it's all relative to where the initial location is. Now you could have fixed locations. It's supposed to go from position A, B, C, and D. And you have the exact positions of those inside of your world. Or you can do relative. In this case, I'm going to do relative. It's going to move over 300 on the Y. Then I'm going to bring it back to the beginning. And then I'm going to move it back to 300 on the Y. And I'm going to continue on like that. You'll see that in motion here. So if we run this this time, now you see it moving 300 in the Y, and it did it over 3 seconds. Let's say I want it to move back now, or actually let's just go all, now let's go back. So what we'll do is we'll add another member, back to 0, relative, and we'll hit play. Now you notice it goes, and comes back. And it's a little bit quicker this time because it's 3 seconds over 3 different actions, instead of 3 seconds over 2. Let's go ahead and pull it back another one. Let's move this negative 300. So now it looks more like a forward backward motion. Forward, backwards, and stops. Now what determines what happens? Well that's going to be our next section which is behavior. By default, let's ignore the first part. We have our behavior type which is one shot. It's going to move from zero to the end all at once over three seconds. Now the next one is one shot reverse. It's going to do the same thing all at once over three seconds and then it's going to reverse it. So three seconds and then now reverse over three seconds. So basically you're going to get your one shot from zero to three over three seconds and then it's going to reverse and go from here to here, to here, to here, over three seconds. So that's what one shot reverse does. 
loop reset. This one's basically going to do the following. It's going to run through, reset, and then continue running through. It's going to do that over the three seconds. So what we're going to do is see it go 0, 1, 2, 3 over three seconds, and then immediately reset back to the first position and start over again. And since it's on loop, that will continue indefinitely. Ping pong. Basically, this will go from the start to the end and back again. And in this case, you'll see it start, end, and then it goes back to the start, and stops, and then goes back to the start, end, back to the start, start, back to the end, and it will ping pong back and forth. Now, obviously, the movement I set up here isn't the best for ping ponging. I mean, if you want to do a ping pong, you should do maybe two different positions and just have it ping pong back and forth. Simulation. This is basically how often will it simulate for collision and things like that. By default, you can leave these at the default settings. Increasing the time step for slower items will give you better performance. Increasing the simulation iterations or forcing sub-stepping sub -stepping will make it cost more in terms of performance. By default, the default values are good. Now our last one here is going to be the pause on impact. I've gone ahead and I've already created another queue and I put it into our scene and I put it right here. And what our, we're going to do with this is run. And you're going to see it stop. Well, in theory, you would have seen it stopped if I had something set up. Let me move my character over here so we can actually see this problem. Watch what happens to the cube when the gray cube hits the white cube. You're actually getting, well, let's see, even then it's still hard to see. Let's move it over. Rotate our guy back again. Is that good? Yeah, let's try that. Okay. You're actually seeing it go through the cube. It's not stopping. This is something to keep in mind. We are moving the root. We are not moving the cube. The cube has collision. The root does not. The cube is following the root. It is being teleported every time we move the root. So if you actually want collision, you're going to have to make sure your root object is the item you're moving. Now we can do fix that by just moving our cube up as the root. And if the interp2 movement or the cube is our root, it doesn't matter. Let's delete that. Here's our cube as our root. Let's go ahead and put our interp2 movement back on. We'll go ahead and add those back. Let's see, we have 300. Well, that's 3,000. And then we had negative 300 here. And we'll go ahead and set this up to a one shot. And we'll go ahead and run it again. Now you'll notice, whoops, probably should have increased the time. Let's go with five seconds. Now you'll notice when it hits, it's going to stop. And it's going to say, stay stopped. That setting is right here under pause on impact. If this is unchecked, which is the default, it's going to stop. Our one shot is basically going to stop because it's designed to go once and then stop. By impacting, it's going to force a stop and it's going to never finish. If we do ping pong and we check this out, you're going to see it basically is forced to stop when it hits the collision and it will go to the next position because it has something else it can do. One shot doesn't have anything else it can do once it stops. Ping pong will continue bouncing back and forth. Loop reset. You can see basically when it hits that, it's going to reset. And then now it's going to continue. So that's something to keep in mind on what that does. Now pause on impact. If we turn on one shot and we set it to pause, we're going to see a different effect. It's going to hit it. It's going to pause. And then it's going to continue when it continues. It's going to continue when it can continue moving. Same thing with our other options. If we set up ping pong and we hit play, it's not stopping. It's pausing. Once it can continue, it continues. So that is the difference between pause on impact and stop on impact. Now our events are pretty much self-explanatory. On interp to reverse. Basically, when reverse is enabled, and it impacts something, and we now reverse, like in the case of our ping pong where it hit and then it reversed. 
this will be called. This is useful to know when you hit something. This is what happens when it comes to a stop. Either it's finished or something impacts it in the way. Then we have the on wait begin delegate, on wait end delegate, and on reset delegate. And basically these are called when it begins, when it ends, and then when it resets. And sorry, this is when you have pause enabled and the wait begins or the wait ends. And this is when it's ever it's reset, when it's back to the start. So that is our interp to movement node. Let's say you had an AI, you simply wanted to do a patrol, but you didn't want to code up anything. You could use an interp to movement. And you could even have some form of obstacles in the way and have it simply pause on impact and continue on as needed if you had like a movable stage. Interp to movement is also nice if you need something to simulate a simple movement. Maybe you wanted something moving up and down like a, a simulated wave or a flag or something oscillating. Interp to movement can easily do that based on position is relative or not and it could actually move around an object as, as it's moving. So that's it. That's going to cover our, our interp to movement actor component. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below.